This week, KTM dominates and doubles again, this time in Daytona. Arena Cross invades Iowa and leaves with a new leader. RV2 flies out of Thailand as RV1. Russell takes his number one and starts where he left off. It was this close for the win in ATV SX. And twice the crasher and still the winner in Enduro Cross? All that and more only on the Racer X Show. Hello and welcome. This is the Racer X Show and I'm your host, Greg. If you thought, well, that is all that we have coming, no, we got a lot more stuff. Ricky Carmichael, amateur supercross races, the women's motocross season opener, and GNCC ATV. It's packed, so let's do this thing. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, soul and passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. We begin with the Supercross segment brought to us by Acherbys and the Monster Energy Supercross 250 East Championship, where only four riders have stood on the podium this season. Take Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki Joey Savachi's third in round one away, and number one played a Geico Honda's Justin Bogle, Yamaha Loop Star Racing Yamaha's Jeremy Martin, and Red Bull KTM's Marvin Muskan have dominated the box, with Muskan winning two of three. But with the points tight, Martin and Bogle need to put Muskan in their rear view mirrors. But this is the very unique Daytona race, and anything can happen. With the gate drop and the charge to the pinched off turn one, a good clean start was key. And it was number 25 Muskan just ahead of Bogle with Hampshire in the mix. But you can see a host of riders clumping up and going down. And for Jeremy Martin, he was buried. As for Muskan, he loves this hybrid supercross motocross type track, and he would set sail. With three laps in, fifth place Martin started to make some moves. Here jumping to the inside of number 49, Jimmy Dakotas. What a move. Now Martin sets his sights on number 80, RJ Hampshire. But up front, it was the Frenchman Marvin Muskan taking his seventh career win and second at Daytona. Again, the East is spaced out. Margin of victory, 5.7. And congratulations to RJ Hampshire on his best Supercross finish fifth. But give it up to your winner, Marvin Muskan. I'm really happy. I mean, I I know I can do really good on those kind of track, and I was really riding really smooth. And uh, it's it's I mean, so much fun. I mean, my bike was working good, really good. We trained really hard down in Florida at the uh, Alden Baker place and uh, Dream Tracks. They built us uh, a really nice uh, Daytona section, and uh, we work hard, and now it's paying off. So I'm really happy. With three or four wins, Muskan is pulling away a bit. Next week in Indy, someone has to step up in order to keep the 25 in sight. Heading into the big bike race, Red Bull KTM's Ryan Dungey has a head of steam, and he hasn't been off the podium since round one, and he's won three of the last five. But he'd never won Daytona, and in the premier class, neither had KTM. But all that changed Saturday night in Volusia County, Florida. When the race got underway, the dash for turn one ensued, and it was not your fastest qualifier of the night, Dungey with the lead. Once again, it was number 29 BTO Sport KTM's Andrew Short, with another fast starter, number 800 Smart Tops Mike Alessi right behind. Fast forward to lap five, and the fight for second is between number five Dungey and number 14 Honda's Cole Seeley. Shorty still leads. A little bumping and grinding, and Seeley goes down. His bid for the win? Over. And then on lap eight, Dungey made his move on short for the number one spot, just blasted by, so impressive. As for discount tires, Chad Reed, who is the second fastest qualifier of the night, making a bid for third on short, did crash. With seven to go, we've talked about him. Weston Pike in his autotrader.com Toyota Yamaha was in second. Could this be the day? Well, after this mad skills motocross move of Eli Tomac, number three on the Geico Honda, that is sick. You thought, well, maybe third for Pike, as Tomac was charging. And chasing these two, number four on the Oshimira Suzuki class rookie, Lake Baggett. Then Pike leaves the door open, and blammo, Tomac goes by. But up front, it was smooth sailing for Dungey to capture his first win in Daytona, starting a KTM sweep streak. Seeley recovers the fourth. Reed clawed his way back up to fifth. Pike, he dropped back to eighth. But it was Dungey's night. For it, you know, Shorty was riding really good there in the beginning, and. I was surprised, um, but I needed to get around him, and it almost, co it almost cost me, as you can see, but uh, we got the win, man, and it feels really special. Dungey's on fire and starting to check out of this championship. I wonder who's going to step up and stop the Minnesota Missile. You can watch Supercross Live on Fox Sports 2 this weekend from Indianapolis. Race coverage begins at 7 p.m. East, 4 p.m. on the left coast. 
And that's our Supercross segment brought to you by a Cherubis. Now on to our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. Where the first ever Moto America race, the new AMA Pro Road Racing Series in the U.S., will take place in Austin, Texas as support races for the Moto GP Series in just under a month on April 9th. Thursday, Moto America will practice three of its classes. Super Sport, the middleweight class, so 600 inline fours, 675 triples, and it will double up the Superbike Superstock 1000 class that'll race twice in the weekend. Yep, you'll have Superbikes being scored in the same race, but separately with Superstock 1000s. Now, if you're thinking of attending, just do it. This is as cool as it gets. The first ever Moto America race with MotoGP, Go to MotoAmerica.com for more information. And if you can't make the first one, tickets for the Road Atlanta round are already on sale. 50 miles north of Atlanta, April 16th through the 19th. Same place, MotoAmerica.com to buy tickets. And that's our road racing segment brought to you by Yoshimira. Round two of the MXGP FIM World Championship happened in Thailand over the weekend. And remember last week, we cautioned you about hitting the panic button on Ryan Villapoto's lackluster start in Qatar. Well, we hate to say we told you so, but at the GP in Thailand, RV2 went 1-3 to take the overall first American rider to stand atop the GP podium since Zach Osborne in 2008. Now, the track in Thailand was what was some are calling super crossy. You know, flat terrain with doubles, whoops, and, well, I mean, super crossy. And in the first race, Monster Energy KRT's Villapoto checked out. But with temps around 100 degrees, and the sun out before race two, it dried things out. RV finished third behind Red Bull KTM's Tony Tyroli and Rockstar Suzuki's Clement DeSalle, saying his Kawasaki was better in the soft dirt. So, should the GP paddock hit their own panic button? Is Villapoto going to dominate from now on? Well, even Ryan said last week that there are some tracks that will suit him better than others. We know that RV2 loves winning, and with the U.S. national anthem playing for him in Thailand, he wants more. So I wouldn't say domination just yet, but if I'm a racer in the MXGP paddock, I'm looking across at the KRT pit area saying, that dude is not here on a farewell tour. He's here to win. Time to step it up. So congratulations to Ryan Villapoto on his maiden MXGP win, and we hope there's a lot more, including next up, March 29th in Argentina. Good luck, RV. When the eighth round of the Amsoil Arena Cross Series featuring Ricky Carmichael's Road to Supercross was done and dusted, a new and unexpected points leader emerged. And one single point separates the top three. Number two, Team Babbitt's Monster Energy Amsoil Kawasaki's Jacob Hayes was the points leader heading into Saturday night's racing in Council Bluffs, Iowa. When the field got moving in main number one, it was side by side between Team Babbitt's Monster Energy Amsoil Kawasaki's Matt Gerke on the 36, and number four, Kyle Regal on his Husqvarna Tyloo Tough Racing Sponsored Machine. Regal came away with the lead and started hauling the mail. Points leader Hayes crashed, slowing his night down. Number eight is Garrett Steinke on his Motorsports.com KTM giving Gerke fits. Those two would go after it a few times until Gerke finally made his move. But gone for the win, Kyle Regal. In main two, it was a mad dash to get out front. In the whoops, Number 116, Robert Canary, and number two, Hayes, got together, and Hayes went down again. Hayes' teammate, Gerke, came out with the lead, but he had Gavin Faith all over him, while Regal was a solid third. Last lap, last corner, Faith tries Gerke, but he wasn't close enough. Matt Gerke for the win. That was enough to give Gerke the overall, but it was Regal's 1-3 for third that did this. One point, Regal leads the Babbitt's powerhouse of Hayes and Gerke by a single tick. Next week in Mississippi, should be really fun to watch. You can watch round seven of the Amsoil Arena Cross Series from Kansas City, Missouri, Sunday on Fox Sports 1 at 11 a.m. East, 8 a.m. Pacific. The 2015 Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxxis kicked off its 41st annual season on Sunday with the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC at Palatka, Florida. Factory FMF KTM's Caleb Russell picked up right where he left off last season with a commanding victory in the XC1 Pro Class. Russell, the two-time consecutive and reigning champ and heavy favorite, got off to a good start behind NFAB and Pro Yamaha's Jordan Ashburn, who won the $250 All Balls Racing Hole Shot Award. Ashburn grabbed the early lead, but it didn't take long for Russell to make his way to the front. Further back, Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing's Josh Strang 
went back and forth with fellow Husqvarna mounted rider Ryan Sipes and Thad Duvall early on, with JCR Honda's Chris Bach inching his way into the battle. But at the halfway point, Bach made his way into a podium position. And after three hours of racing, Caleb Russell made a big statement with his 23rd career victory and his first overall win at the season opener in Florida. Strang came through over two and a half minutes behind Russell to secure second place overall. In the XC2 Pro Lights class, it was Rocky Mountain ATV MC's Nick Davis who came away with the victory. Pennsylvania's Tegan Temple grabbed the early lead, but Davis made his way to the front on lap two. Russell and Thomas, complete your podium. Shifting gears to the Geico Endurocross series, the series that takes crazy obstacles like telephone poles, tires, big rocks, whatever, and puts them in an arena cross size venue. And then they say, go racing. Big news heading into round one at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. Last year's champ, Cody Webb, has moved from beta motorcycles to the FMF RPM KTM Team Maxxis team. So, how would he fare? Right off the bat, number three, Mike Brown on the Rockstar Husqvarna took advantage of a rocket start to take the next entire $500 hole shot award. Number one plated Webb, who had a bad start, was making moves towards the front. Here with number seven, Kyle Redman. The onboard camera shows Webb getting by number 10, Colton Haker. Meanwhile, Mike Brown is leading. In the rocks, crashes. Going by on the inside is Webb, with number 118, Corey Grafunder, stuck. So Webb has the lead. Then he goes down, but keeps his KTM alive and keeps moving with the lead. Then Webb again with a tip over. This time, Redman goes by, but Webb was a man possessed. How about this pass on Haker? That's a block pass and more. Then pass the leader Redmond for the lead and the stroll home for the checkered flag. A bad start and two crashes, then the win. Come on, that is how you do Enduro Cross. Round one of the Geico AMA Enduro Cross series will air on CBS Sports Network Wednesday, March 18th at 7 p.m. East. Check to see if you have CBS Sports Network. On the GNCC ATV side of things, the Amsoil GNCC series presented by Maxxis had two hours of intense racing. And it was NFAB Ampro Yamaha's Walker Fowler who came away with the first victory of the 2015 season. CST Lone Star's Adam McGill shot off the start to capture the $250 Amsoil XC1 hole shot award and the early lead. Six-time GNCC national champ Chris Boric had issues getting off the line, forcing him to make his way through the pack on the opening lap. Fowler also struggled but latched onto Boric for the march to the front. All the while, West Virginia native Adam McGill continued to lead. Bithel Racing's Chris Bithel was in second by the halfway point, but Boric and Fowler eventually caught and passed the Pennsylvania native to put themselves into podium contention. On the final lap, Fowler caught the rear wheel of McGill and the two battled through the final turns of the sandy Florida soil. With lap traffic scattering throughout the course, McGill and Fowler took different lines. Fowler made the right choice, while McGill didn't. Fowler for the win, with McGill only two seconds behind. Unfortunately, Walker Fowler missed the podium because of serious cramping issues following the race, but congratulations to his mechanic on accepting the award. On Tuesday, history for the Mountain Dew ATV MX Championship on the famed Daytona International Speedway infield, the inaugural Fly Racing ATV Supercross happened. Yep, you heard me, ATVs racing on a Supercross track. And with Daytona Bike Week in full swing, thousands of fans filled the infield grandstands to watch. When the gate dropped on the 15-lap main event, the top 16 riders of the day barreled into the first turn pin, first to emerge Baldwin Motorsports Honda's John Natale, earning him the Bell Helmets Hole Shot Award, just behind Florida native Jeffrey Ristrelli on the JB Racing Can-Am. Maxxis Yamaha's Thomas Brown, Corrosion Specialty Hetrick Racing Honda's Joel Hetrick, and reigning champ Wienan Motorsports Yamaha's Chad Wienan, who had to get to the main to the LCQ, were following. On lap one, Brown crashed in the rhythm section, dropping him to the tail end of the field. So Hetrick and Wienan move up a spot. The gap between Natale, Ristrelli, Hetrick, and Wienan stayed consistent until just about the halfway point, when Ristrelli came up short in the rhythm section and tipped over, eliminating him from competition. Now fast forward to the last lap, and just over a second separates leader Natale and Hetrick. Last year's championship runner-up stayed on Natale's rear wheel until the final stretch run to the finish, when he took the inside line and put a wheel inside Natale. 
the veteran Natale didn't flinch and held his line, forcing Hetrick to make a last-ditch attempt in the final split lane section leading to the finish line that came up short. The two riders crossed the line nose to tail, bringing the crowd to a standing ovation. Wienan followed just a couple of seconds back in third. Bird and Janusa round out the top five with a familiar name of Josh Upperman in seventh. The sixth annual Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercrosser RCSX concluded two full days of racing on Monday at Daytona International Speedway. With over 1,400 race entries, including some of the biggest names in amateur motocross, the AMA-sanctioned RCSX kicked off the five-race American Motocross Championship schedule. And here's a look at the big races with some big names. Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki's Darian Sinai won two of the three premier races against a field of young riders primed to advance to the pro ranks upon maturation, claiming championships in the 450A Pro Sport and 250 All-Star AB. Sinai didn't have it easy. A host of heavy hitters like Mitchell Harrison, Daniel Baker, Chase Bell, and Tristan Charbonneau hot in pursuit throughout every moto, all names you'll hear in the American Motocross Championship races we'll talk about during the season. In the third of those premier classes, 250A Pro Sport, it was Daniel Baker of KTM's Orange Brigade who took home the championship. In the mini classes, it was Husqvarna Racing's Jalik Swole who came away with a pair of championships, sweeping both the Mini Senior 1, 12 to 13, and Mini Senior 2, 12 to 14 classes. Swole also finished sixth in the Super Mini 12 to 16 main event. The 2015 Women's Motocross Championship, or WMX, got going in grand style on Sunday and Monday at Daytona International Speedway in conjunction with the Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercross. Kylie Fosnock emerged victorious as the round one winner of the WMX series with her 1-1 sweep in Daytona. Congratulations to Kylie. Next round in a couple of weeks. We want you to get out and watch some racing. Supercross lands in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium Saturday night. AMA Pro Flat Track kicks off their season in Daytona Beach Thursday and Friday this week, just outside the Speedway. Friday and Saturday in South Haven, Mississippi, Arena Cross lands in the Lander Center. And GNCC heads to Aona Pass Motocross Track in Washington, Georgia for round two. Be a racer or a fan. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, soul and passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. Oh my goodness, that was one full show. We try to keep the show short and sweet as we can, so we are out. Check out all of our social media links, Twitter and Instagram. It's Racer X Show on YouTube, The Racer X Show. Like us, follow us, feel free to post the show around. We love it and appreciate it. You can follow me personally on Twitter. It's at Greg White. Well, for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show and Racer TV, I'm Greg. Remember, we are all racing all the time. Get out and watch some racing or go race. Do something.